Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast. It's Jeff and Jeremy here. It's KZOZ online, KZOZ.com, home of the Red Zone Challenge, brought to you by Donahue Track Center, as well as Fred Bruin, the Central Coast Realtor. Tonight, Thursday Night Football, really excited about this one. Look at that, 86% of the Red Zone Nation says that Gardner Minshew mm. and the Jacksonville Jaguars will take out the Miami Dolphins and Mr. Fitzmagic. 86% predicting a win for the Jacksonville Jaguars which will send the Miami Dolphins to 0 and 3, the Jaguars to 2 and 1. I'm excited and for probably this game. mark the end of Fitz Magic if it happens the way that the uh odds makers project it happening because two is waiting there in the wings. They start 0 and 3. They got to see what the kids got. Correct? Yeah, yeah, no, you got to see what he's got, and he should he should get a shot. I mean, and I, I, there was a funny uh, back and forth between Fitzmagic and Gardner Minshew. By the way, go Cougs. Uh, he uh, Fitzmagic was saying something to the effect of uh, how a beard is more manly than a mustache, and oh. Gardner looked right at the camera and he goes, "Well, he is my elder, and I don't want to disrespect him. I mean, he's my <laughs> much much elder." <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> Experience. When this uh, opened, it was a... Uh, it was over youth or whatever. When the, when the line opened... It's funny that 86% are picking Jacksonville to win. Because when the line opened, it was a uh, pick em, And it's now moved to Jacksonville being a three-point favorite in the game. The game is being played in Jacksonville. Yeah, so I don't know that. if the three-point rule applies this year because there is limited fans in the seats but from watching the nfl network this morning early um they said that uh 17 000 fans will be there tonight uh in the stands uh, i don't know if they're going to get used to the pool uh but uh, they will be there in the stands so there will be a jacksonville presence there i think uh, they've already exceeded expectations on the season for the first two games even though they're one and one they weren't supposed to beat the colts they were heavy underdogs against the colts um and then they were heavy underdogs against the titans but came back and had a chance to win that game if you liked the the game of football and you heard miami was taking on jacksonville on thursday night you probably would find several other things to do but when you look at the matchups when you look at the players this is going to be an exciting football game tonight and I'm really, I have to say, I want to say thank you. I want to give you credit ahead of time. Cause you say that I never give you credit. I want to give you credit ahead of time because you told me to go get this kid, LaVisca Chenault Jr. That's great. And, uh, from, uh, formerly of the University of Colorado. Uh, I think he was taken 47th in the draft last year. He's a rookie and he's already had a decent season. And I'm thinking tonight might be his coming out party. Did I tell you to might be? I don't think I told him. You said, I said, I said he's good. I said, I said, here's what I'm looking at, Jeff. I need to pick up some receivers. And, uh, because I think I gave you, uh, I gave you Brandon Cooks and uh, Michael Thomas is uh, for, in a trade we traded. And Michael Thomas, I knew wasn't going to play for a couple of weeks. I needed to get a couple of guys to throw in there. And I said, you said LaVisca Chenault. I said, what do you think of it? You said, go get him. Even though he's there third option on the team. But I think he's going to become their first option on the team. I really think this is going to be a big game for him tonight. We'll have to see. Uh, DJ Chark, is uh, he's been kind of injured a little bit, and he's like, I mean, if we want to get real technical about it, he's like 35th, 36th receiver on the week. As far as rankings go, he hasn't had the big start to the season. I think a lot of people did, and nobody heard of this kid. And so we'll see. I forget who the other guy is that is the other option there. For the for the Jaguar, yeah, the receiving. You said uh, he's the third. Keelan Cole is Cole, le- leading right. leading the team in receptions. Yeah, so we'll see what happens tonight. So I'm excited about that. But with Jacksonville, they spread the ball around so much, right? That I mean, they have. I mean, here's, here's how good their receiving core is. Okay, D. D. Westbrook, who would be the second or third option on any other team in the NFL, is some weeks an inactive. Uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars because they've got such depth at wide receiver. Chris Conley's there as well. I mean, it's just, there's a, there's a steed of receivers for your boy Gardner Minshew to throw to, um, in Jacksonville, which makes them, uh, a good, a good option for score a lot of points tonight. Um, I, 
this is a tough game to pick a winner on this one. It really is. I know well, you, whatever I know you do, you I'm going to pick the opposite because I, I this year you've Jackson made nothing Bill. but terrible decisions when it comes to football. Who went 15 and six? Okay. Uh, 15 out of 16 last week. Okay. It, okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. Did I make bad decisions last <laughs> you week? You did. I made one. You picked Cincinnati to upset Cleveland. I made one. I made one bad decision last week. That's it. <laughs> okay, that is true. You did go 15 out of 16 last week, and you are now sitting in front of the rest of us losers here at the on the staff. Anyways, Red Zone Challenge, you should play. Go to KZOZ.com. Uh, Jose Gutierrez uh, got uh, the most picks correct last week. He was perfect. 16 out of 16. Pick the Raiders to knock off the Saints in Monday Night Football. He picks up $25 to go to Pappy McGregor's. Thanks to Fred Bruin, the Central Coast Realtor. Fred Bruin. Check him out. As well as a chance to win $500 cash from our friends at Donahue Truck Center. It's the second year now in the Red Zone channel, uh, Challenge. And uh, you can find out more about them um, by going to DonahueTrucks.com. They are your home for commercial trucks, uh, Hino Trucks. We're going to get political this hour. Well, we're going to talk about Prop 22 coming up. It's That's our not, new poll question. You see that you totally took a great tease and, and totally made it boring. Because when you start saying props and numbers, nobody cares. If you would have just left it at, we're going to get political no, this hour, no. people would have been like, oh, no, what are they going to say? What are they going to say about my boy? Not the case. No, but here's the reason I said it. It's because I don't think people want to talk about politics. I think people come here to not hear us talk about politics. But this one is going to affect... But unlike everybody, just like everybody else, it affects our lives because we're around it every day, and so we're going to have to talk about it. Now, this, I think, is interesting because I think it affects California and it affects a lot of people here in in San Luis Obispo County. The Central Coast, the tourism uh, area, uh, this has... uh, uh, overreaching complications to your uh, lifestyle if you would like to go out and enjoy uh, all the fruits of the region and that would mainly be the grapefruit of the region not i don't mean grapefruit like the ones that they grow can you imagine if we lost Florida. every car service if we lost all the ubers the lifts and your way to get home safely after consuming all endless of sudden, amounts that of, one that one blue taxi of, of wine and all beer of, all of a sudden that one blue taxi and those three white minivans uh do you remember what it was like back when we had to rely on the taxi company here <laughs> five four three one two three four <laughs> A great phone number. Sometimes I would wait two, three hours just to get a ride. Or I'd wait two hours just to get a call back saying, oh, sorry, we're too busy. Uh, based, what? Based on the poll question so far, you might want to invest in yellow cars. As you're watching TV, this is where I've seen it the most. Uh, you see a lot of uh, people on vote no on Prop 21, vote yes on Prop 22, vote no. It's like it's like it happens so fast. Uh, you know, save dialysis, vote no. I was like, oh, vote yes. I don't know what it is. I, it's so fast that I'm like, wait, what happened? What happened? So you really need to go out and do a little bit of homework on this. Now it's easy yes. enough to do a, a a quick Google search. Chiba joins us. What's up, Chiba? Good morning. And, um, by the way, Mike and Rufus, her name is Chiba, C-H-E-E-B-A, not Sheba, like the cat. Mike thinks your name is Sheba. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, she works from her home. She, you can do radio from your home. Sheba gets to, I'm sorry, Chiba gets to, <laughs> but Jeff and I have to come in here. So I don't know if she's seen your text, so I thought I'd get that out of the way first. But um, you, you had some questions about Prop 22, and I think you were asking Jeff, because it has to do with people that drive like for these car services like Uber and Lyft. But, yeah, same. I saw the commercials on TV, and I was actually going through my little pamphlet I got in the mail the other day about all the ballots, you know, going over everything. And I know there's always two sides to every story, and I know there the people that are, you know, propositioning for one side have a way of sometimes misleading you with the wording. So I wanted to ask Jeff, somebody who's involved, what what's the real deal? What's now, going on? before you actually give your opinion on it, can you just explain what it, what the measure is? Yeah, so Prop 22 is going to make basically Uber, Lyft, Instacart, DoorDash, fill in the blank on any of these gig uh, companies that are that are uh, employing uh, workers to... App-driven uh, work drivers, right? Yeah, yeah, and delivery services. 
Um, they they essentially are uh, the state of California, uh, from what I understand, the only state um, pushing to make them an employer and not a contractor based an employment. independent contractor employment. So the way it's been is you've been an independent contractor, right? I mean, you haven't been an employer of Uber. You've yeah. been you're an, you're a Jeff employer, meaning you, you're you're an independent guy who does work for them, and that's how it's been. But you know, government comes in and they're like, well, hold on a second. Uh, we don't know if the companies are stepping up and doing their fair share. And so now they want co- like companies like Uber and Lyft and, and you name them uh, to start giving you benefits and guaranteed hours. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Now, no one Prop 22 argues that um, the measure, uh, Prop 22, if you vote yes on it, threatens good middle class union jobs if the, uh, if the companies succeed in buying the election. Um, their low pay, no protection business model will expand in virtually every industry leading to unprecedented job loss and a race to the bottom. This say. is no on 22. This is what the this people are no saying. No. 22. 22 is saying, let's, let's go back to the way it was. Yeah. So the state of California, uh, at the beginning or at the end of last year, they passed a law that said that these companies were going to have to operate as an employer. These companies say no, so they tied it up in courts, and then they were able to get it on the ballot to have the people vote for it instead of having this, the government just legislative write off on it and and make it law. Branch of government vote on it. Yeah. Yeah. So So we're voting on whether we think these companies should have to pay the the employees benefits and things. Yes. So Now, let me ask you a question. Now, okay, so let's say they have to pay you benefits and you're now an employee. You have to do like eight hours or so many hours a week for them, or can you still pick and choose how many hours you want to work? That could be um, in the in the books. I mean, they would have to restructure how they do their business based on how the law would allow them to do their business in the state of California. So, um, it, you know, that is up in the air as of, of right now, but I would think that they could do one of three things. They could try to operate the same way that they're operating right now, but that would be very hard because the law would not make them allowed to do so. So, um, they would probably have to assign shifts because you know what? You're an employee of that company now. So you'd have to be assigned a shift at which point me as a person that does this very occasionally and I haven't done it for a long time. Um, but I, I plan on doing it in the future when I want to make some extra cash. Well, the way you've uh, always done it would really screw with you because you'll just turn it on, and if you want to take a ride, you'll take a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you don't, you don't. Sometimes Jeff, had when he lived in T- Templeton, Chiba, he would turn it on, I don't know, 30 minutes before Saturday. he'd leave, and then he would, if he got a, he could get a ride to go north, then he would take it. So that kind of stuff would not exist. It would not be easy for that to, no, to exist. No, because I would have to be assigned a shift, so I would be out. I would be out on so the... So that's where it's interesting to me, because so you got people that rely on this for almost like a full-time income, and then you have people who are just doing it as a side income. So mm-hmm. whether you, whatever you vote is going to affect either one of those groups in some way. Yes. Um, so that's the hard part. Yes, it is. Um I don't know. I, I have a personal opinion as to having this as a career. Um, I think it's a poor career choice. I don't, sure, I don't but think, I know a lot I, of people don't have any options, especially uh, right now when people, so many people Most are people, yeah, they always call this their side hustle, right? I mean, that's yeah. what Uber was kind of nicknamed for a long time. Now, yes they usually on 22, have something else going on. Yes on 22 claims that 80% of their drivers um, are like myself. They, they just do it, you know, whenever they feel, side hustle. feel the need. Um, you know, or the company standpoint, whenever, whenever they want to, that is, um, yes, on 22 standpoint. So the company and ours isn't all the, all, all the Uber, Lyft, DoorDiff, they're the ones backing yes on 22, yes, right? They're the ones that got the signatures to get it on the ballot and make it, you know, uh, something that the, the people vote for. I think, um, you know, what both sides are, are doing is like, you know, they're, they're trying to rally their base. And what is being missed here in the greater good of the, of the whole argument is, is, I mean, because there's positives and negatives of both sides of it. Um, yeah. Uh, but what's getting missed here is the convenience it is to society. Uber has said that there's a good chance that if this becomes a law, it would be, it would make it cost, ineffective so it would it would not be cost effective in the state of california for them to operate 
anymore they in will the leave. state of California. They will leave the state of California. They're not, they're not, it's not a threat. No, they, but, th- but there they, is a they'll chance. They'll try to make it work, but they don't know if they can. Right. So there is a chance that we would not have app-based delivery services. And I would think that Uber and Lyft kind of drive the, the push on this because they're the ones sure. that make the most money. Um, so if Uber sees that it's not, it's not financial, it does not financially make sense, you're going to lose everybody. Or if Lyft mm-hmm. says it's not financially se- uh, making sense, Uber might stay on to try to pick up some of that extra Lyft and see if, you know, if that's, but it's probably not going to make sense for them too. Because they have to pay all these other well, they things. They have to pay people workers, to do schedules, to schedule stuff. The, the infrastructure, workers' comp. Yeah, but, um, but the infrastructure, the people they're going to have to create jobs to you know pay people, it's going to be so cost ineffective to them as a corporation to do this just for California. Mm-hmm. And then who's to say that other states don't follow? You know, it could be... So I understand that side of it. All right, now let's, let's think about the driver side of it. What they're saying is if you vote no on it and, and, you know, then we're talking if you work so many hours a week, I think I read 15, that then that you could uh, expect benefits, health benefits, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. That's I. okay. That's great. I mean, I don't know. But the problem is no company there to provide those health benefits, then nobody's getting any benefit. Right. And what I want to focus mainly on is the whole not having the infrastructure in place because it it, it it is important to our community here in San Luis Obispo County because like we were saying and joking about earlier, what are you going to go back to? The one blue car and the three minivans to give all these people rides around to all these places. When we get back to normal, there'll be events, there'll be wine tasting, there'll be weddings, there'll be a lot of alcohol consumed here on the central coast and jeremy when i was saying that is is like well that's horrible because that would lead to an increase in duis yeah. jw people has have to get around places that it, studies have been done since uber came around and this was this was a couple years ago the duis had gone way down dui crashes had gone way down just because you know people have an alternative now and if we lost that that would be terrible so, so I don't something know. you have to think about i mean if if it's 20% of their workforce re- relies on and what they and what their statement is if 20% of their workforce relies it on it as steady income um the, are we are we sacrificing a lot to benefit those 20% of people um uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to it from an inf- infrastructure standpoint i mean that's where i sit on it and i don't need it's not an absolute need for me to do Uber. Mm-hmm. So I am, I, 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 whatever way it goes, it goes. I do see the benefit to Yes on 22, though, from an infrastructure standpoint. Um, well, Gavin Newsom did a series of exemptions, and now the news <laughs> is okay with it. I know. <laughs> this is funny because uh, this is uh, uh, what something. What is going that, on here? This is something we missed all together, and it's interesting because that series of exemptions just came down, what, in the last few weeks, right? There's been like two or three different big series of exemptions because yeah. other people, it's whoever has money with lobbyists. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, we need some lobbyists. Because there was uh, there was a, a great deal of independent contractors because it, it applied to a lot of people like you know musicians and I mean a Isn't lot there? of hairstylists uh, yeah anybody who does work on their own and employs themselves were were falling under this AB five so then the lawmakers were like oh crap and then it's, there's an election coming up we know because Uber and and Lyft uh, pretty much got it on the ballot. Um, but we need to be able to get the votes from those people that are affected on the other side of it. Because really, this the AB5 intent, was intended to go after gig economy. But well, then, that thing should be repealed because the lady that wrote it just, just oh, whatever, oh, that's another rant. <laughs> but yes, no, I, and you're absolutely right. So now it just uh, targets basically... The delivery services and other gig based, um, app based, uh, industries. Um, and it doesn't. Yeah, well, it's been, now that it's been fine tuned by lobbyists and targeting just the particular people that yes. like, everybody else exactly. could buy exemption. How can we get more terrible. votes? It becomes a game of strategy. How can we get more votes? Well, we can't get votes if we don't have support of the newspapers. 
So um, let's write an exemption for them. How can we get more votes? Uh, we can't get more votes if we uh, in, in include musicians and artists. So um, let's go ahead and exempt them. So, it, yes, <laughs> it, it, that's the way it works. The, idea, the whole thing, the point of it is we all know who's behind this, all right? And we all know, oh, yeah. we all know where this came from, and it's, that's what bothers me the most. What I would like to do is I would like to poll, I would like to poll drivers like Jeff, more people that drive for Uber, for Lyft, that drive for the companies that deliver groceries and medications and, you know, food and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, where do they sit on this whole thing? Because if 80 plus percent of the people that, uh, that do this job, this is their second job, you know, I'm sure they don't want to commit to a certain shift, and they don't want to commit to a certain amount of hours. Agree. That's it. Um, it's but it's the government once again telling us how we should do our job. It's and how interesting. We I, I just think I think people should realize when they when they go to the polls that which which is better for society. You know, I mean, like they. I know. Absolutely. I understand the unions are heavy no on Prop 22, and their argument is that a lot of other uh, companies will go down the route of uh, a business model like an Uber or an Instacart or a DoorDash or something like that, um, where, you know, what whatever. It, it, the yes on 22 allows for these things for you to choose. It gives you an option to choose. Okay, do I want to take a taxi that's going to take me five hours to get anywhere I'm going, or do I just want to dial it up on my app and get there in 15 minutes? My logical consistency doesn't allow me to be uh, pro-choice on every issue, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great day. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. 805-543-3693 are the numbers to get through. Somebody wrote in and they said, please stop with the stupidity about Prop 22. You think Uber and Lyft are going to leave California? Really? It's simple enough to base... Uh, employer requirements such as social security or workers compensation based on actual drive time with passengers they just want to they just want their pay well i mean and and that's an argument that the folks uh, on on no on prop 22 uh, uh they use that I, I also on the other hand look at the fact that they can operate in 49 other states and both their Corporate offices are in the state of California, which is problematic, too, because they leave the state of California from a business model. They're going to go elsewhere. Look elsewhere. Here's to, my to, thing. To, Once to again, have this is a, a choice. This is a choice you make to drive a vehicle and to, to drive people around to be a service like this. All right. And you understand when you took that job, what the what it entailed. All right. You understood I I that there was no be benefits. Any social security. But benefits. you also knew that you I, could pick your own schedule. Yes. And so, I mean, I work for go work somewhere else if, if that's the case. Yes, I don't want to shift. So I will be voting yes on 22. But to each their own, you know. And there is a chance they could leave. I realize, you know, you don't you call it stupidity, but I mean, come on. You're stupid if you think this isn't, there isn't a chance that they may leave the state of California. And then what happens when they leave? If and it becomes then we, cost ineffective, we, we realize the that there's more DUIs and then there's less uh, efficiency. I mean, getting from point A to point B or getting the things delivered to the people that need the things delivered to them. Do, at that point, do they like, oh, we made a mistake. We better allow them to operate as, you know, it's just. Yeah, I, I say it makes them look busy. It makes the politicians uh, look busy because they're constantly working on stupid stuff. I say what makes most sense, <laughs> most sense on the surface, and that is. Leave well enough alone because it's been well enough to this point and it is for 49 other states and it's not a problem. And if you really want to drill down to it, let the individual communities decide. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. If San Francisco and Los Angeles have a problem with it because they feel like the drivers are being exploited, then enact that policy in San Francisco and Los Angeles because it affects us here far differently than it does the people in Los Angeles and San Francisco. You know, it's interesting. Somebody else wrote in this says the state wants Uber drivers to be considered employees so they can collect on unemployment tax. Mm -hmm. They collect on people twice if they have another job, but only pay out once if they only have one job. So there's another side of it. You can always let your thoughts be known. Uh, if you don't want to have a conversation and you just want to do a drive-by, 805-543-3693, drop in your text. Hey, I just want to say give us a thank call you for the line. conversation. I learned a lot, and I hope I hope everybody looks at the ballot that way. Go down, read everything. If you don't know, ask questions. Somebody just called in during that uh, that conversation that we were having with Brian, 
and said, why are you telling people how to vote? I, that's not our goal here at all. We're just talking about a proposition that I didn't know a lot about until Chiba brought it up yesterday, it sent us a, an email, and so we looked into it and we started reading it. Yes, um, you know, we, uh, we may, obviously we have opinions on it, but that doesn't mean we're telling you what to do. You do as you need to do. Go research these propositions right. and make your own decision. If you're about you union go. jobs and, and benefit security, uh, employment security, and things like that, then probably you want to vote no on 22 if you are about the freedom to choose how you make your money you're probably for yes on 22 i guess we'll just have to see where the state um sees it when it comes to the election i still think and i and i truly think what i just said um is the ideal way for this to go down they have a problem with it in san francisco and los angeles it's not working out in san francisco and los angeles why should it be a problem elsewhere where it is working out we this is a state that i mean listen the reason why it comes up every two to three years why we should split this state up into seven different states <laughs> is, because, is because it's too big of a state to govern it's so funny because where we grew up in washington state the cascade mountain range everybody's familiar with that mount rainier and on but the left side of the state and the right side of the state uh, are completely different yeah. and so we've we're used to hearing this well, why don't we just split them up into two but in California, yeah, we could probably go seven. We could probably go <laughs> into seven different departments because, yes, why is it we're we're suffering for something that is happening in uh, in San Francisco that the rest of the state has to suffer for? So, Skip, or vice versa, if you feel the opposite way. On the eight hundred five text lines, uh, Skip says, "You think the state wants Uber tax money or DUI fines and fees money?" Question mark. I don't know. Well, that's a good question, and mm-hmm. that's one people should ask, I guess, when they go to the polls. But if anything, the message is get out, research things before yeah. you vote. Everybody's yeah. going to vote. They know the vo- voter turnout's going to be higher than ever. It takes a few minutes to go through each one of these props. Well, uh, who's who's kidding here? It took me about at least 10 minutes yesterday because there's just <laughs> a lot of extra writing. that does, like, yes. Somebody that writes these should have went to a journalism class on learning how to write efficiently. I, I oh, no, they went to school on learning how to write them hard and misunderstanding on purpose. <laughs> yes. No, that's, yes. Uh, you really have to read it twice. It's more yep. of a skill to be complicated in your writings than it is to be yep. straightforward and to the point. All right. We'll yep. be right back. Thanks for uh, jumping on, Chiba. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.